how loud as I've talked in two years. Um, thank you everyone for coming and getting your food and getting seated so quickly. Um, we're excited to see the kids already drawing and everyone getting engaged. My name is Courtney Breest and I'm part of the team that is going to be helped just listening and facilitating tonight's discussion and we are really excited to be here and just get input from all of you and listen to your questions, respond, take a lot of information away and um, be able to report back to you with um, answers at the next meeting at a later date. We're gonna have more information on that later. Uh, so yeah, I just want to, um, sorry. Oh yes, sorry. I'm just gonna pass it off to the rest of my team who's gonna share a little bit more about tonight's um, organization. And over here is Stacy. Hey y'all, first of all, thanks for having us here. We really appreciate it to be able to be here and hear what y'all have to say. And hit for the kids, you can actually draw on the tablecloth. Probably one of the first times y'all can do that, so go for it. Just real quickly, we want to respect y'all's time as well. So here we've got a quick agenda. You've already done the right thing. You're welcome. You grabbed a plate. You're making yourself at home. We're going to talk for about half an hour about a vision from Whittier, where we're going to hear from your mayor. We're going to hear from Mickey from Puna, and they're going to give you a sense of a lot of what's on your table and just a background about the project we're talking about. At 6:45, you're going to have some time to talk amongst yourselves at your table. What some of your reflections might be, what some of your questions might be. And then we're gonna ask y'all to share that with the group. Um, if there is just one person from each table that can give us an idea of what a main takeaway was, what maybe one of your questions is, that's what I'm gonna be doing, is I'm gonna be doing kind of live visual note taking, so we're gonna capture some of that up here. <laughs> then, um, so that'll be at seven where you're sharing your thoughts. And then at 7.30, we're gonna ask you guys to basically interact with some of the things that we have up here. We'll explain a little more, but you can give some of your feedback because again, the idea is to get all of your questions, any of your comments. You've got boxes on the table where you can slip in anonymous questions. If you'd rather not stand up and share, you have something that, you know, you just would rather keep it all down low. We're gonna have questions here where you can put post-it notes and there's also an area out in the lobby where you can do that too. But at 7.55, we'll talk about next steps and you'll walk away with a pie. There's gonna be a raffle throughout, so stay tuned for that. We're not gonna wait till the very end, so keep, keep your, eye, your antenna up, I guess, to hear about what you might win from signing up. And I think that's it. So I'm gonna pass it over to Ariel, who's going to be facilitating the session. Hello, everyone. <laughs> My name is Ariel. Uh, it's really nice to be here in Whittier. Uh, some of our team was involved in the creation of the comp plan in 2020. And so, especially Courtney right here, so we're happy to be back and providing an inclusive process for the community to uh, give input um, on this, this uh, vision. A uh, couple things that Stacy already mentioned, please uh, utilize the boxes at your table if you have a question. You don't want to ask it out in the open if it's the elephant in the room please put it in the box there is uh, if you would like call back put your number um, and there's also Jackie's business cards at the table um, if you want to pick up the call pick up the phone and give her a call directly there's also brown paper so all of the tables are covered with paper that is to just organize freely organize your thoughts you can you can write and uh, draw and just use that space there's markers at your table um, and then, uh, as Stacy mentioned, we will be talking in at your tables today and we'll pass out um, a handout, another opportunity to add input. And so our goal today is to gather as much input from this group as possible. And we may need to uh, speed up the conversation to allow time at the end to get everybody up and moving around the room because that is another opportunity for more input um, the pies will be handed out at the end, and the raffle will happen throughout. Uh, there's some really cool prizes, so stay tuned for that. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to pass it off to, to the mayor, Dave. All right, well, thank you very much. Uh, Catalyst Consulting, just, I don't know if you uh, mentioned that, but that's the, the name of the outfit that we've got here helping us with this. We just felt, this is such a 
So it's you know a, a big deal, kind of a turning point for our city here. And, and we, if you, we just want to make sure that we had somebody here to help us with the communication. So uh, I, I just want to thank them for coming down and uh, putting the effort in here. Um, yeah, I'm Dave Dickinson, uh, Mayor, and uh, just I want to welcome you guys. Thank you very much. This is. As you can tell, we weren't expecting uh, this many people to show up, so uh, so I'll, I'll try to be louder. Maybe I should try and use this microphone here. <clears throat> can you hear me better now? Mm -hmm. okay. All right, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, just on, you know, on behalf of the council, on behalf of the city, I want to I want to welcome you guys here. This is really sincerely, this is a great turnout and uh, this is really an important issue for our, our community. So thank you very much for showing up. Uh, you know, it's, this was set up, um, you know, we're not broadcasting this. You know, the whole intent here was to hear from our, our local citizens. And I hope you guys, I hope you understand that, I hope you appreciate it because we don't want you to feel nervous about uh, expressing your opinions or your feelings and worried about how somebody outside of our city might uh, interpret that this this is for you guys right this is really uh, um, yeah I just want to make sure that you understand that this is, is uh, important that you tell us how you feel because because um, this I think this project could really change things for us um, I want to start by setting some ground rules you know everybody has strong opinions and uh, I want to make sure that we we're very respectful of each other right uh, we want to make sure that um, uh, you know, you feel safe to express your opinions, but you know, don't criticize anyone else's ideas. Uh, keep your comments respectful. Um, you know, these are our friends and our neighbors, so you know, want to make sure that they're supported, and, and I hope you you uh, keep that in mind. Um, and then, if not, then we've got a Tom Wagner here who will uh, take care of you. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, you know, Whittier's a, a small city. Um, we got very few opportunities for uh, generating revenue. Um, we got very little land available to, uh, you know, for economic development. Uh, we have aging infrastructure here, as you know. You know, we got uh, a lot of uh, infrastructure here that goes back to Cold War era and, and even World War II, and it needs to be repaired. In some cases, it needs to be replaced. Um, you know, we, we're looking for ways. We, we've been looking for ways to uh, explore. Uh, avenues for for revenue generation for a long time. Um, you know, as a matter of fact, um, the third, the 58 acres that we're talking about down at the head of the bay, it, we've been working on that for 30 years, for over 30 years. You know, we recognize that we need to do something, and and we've decided, we voted on this before that uh, we needed to do something up there at the head of the bay. Um, we just uh, we just closed on that deal, by the way, uh, in September, right? So this is all kind of coming together. Um, you know, I, some people say there's no such thing as coincidences, but uh, it, it's really cool the way the timing has worked out on this. Um, the city's also talked about developing a small boat harbor up there at the head of the bay for a long time. You know, we've even got a grant that we're, we're working on with the federal government to build a, a small boat harbor, a breakwater, which would then develop into a small boat harbor up there. Um, and we've been working on that for a long time. I think, uh, you know, I think uh, that, that started back in about 2007, if I remember correctly. Does that sound about right, Dave, about 2007 or so? Um, you know, um, there's just been a, a, a lot of work done in the past. So this is not like a new idea. I, I just don't want anybody to think that all of a sudden these guys showed up and we thought, hey, this is a great idea. Um, you know, these kind of issues have been talked about for quite a while. Um, it, you know, it, um, one of the things about that small bar bar I want to mention is that, uh, you know, one of the things that, that happens there, of course, the, the harbor is uh, very congested. And a harbor there, one of the things that we want to try and alleviate was the congestion and we want to be able to separate user groups so that there's people, uh, you know, that you don't have bow pickers competing with other boaters, you know, to, to uh, you know, compete for the same sort of resources. And, uh, and then the launch ramps up there at the head of the bay, you know, that's, that's 
if we could do that and move some of that launching up there, that would really be a, a big benefit to us. And then the other thing I want to mention is that uh, our comp plan, you know, has talked about doing something up ahead of Bay for, and, and not just this past comp plan in, in 2020, but you know, the comp plan before that and the comp plan, you know, before that as well. So this is, these are all things that we've talked about for a long time. Uh, the, the issues that came out of this last comp plan were city beautification, um, you know, a Whittier Visitor Center, and head of the Bay development. Right. So it all kind of came down to infrastructure and tourism uh, that we as a community have voted on. We as a community have decided that those are the things that we want to try and do here. Um, you, know, you know, prior to this uh, Peg Farm property uh, transfer, uh, Kuna Corporation, uh, they came to us and you know, they, they were interested in developing a partnership with us. They saw some of the possibilities here. Um, Huna has a, an established track record, and uh, their development at Icy Strait Point uh, in Huna is just outstanding. Uh, they pride themselves on honoring the culture and values of the community, and they received numerous accolades and awards for, for responsible tourism practices. Uh, and now they've provided us with a conceptual plan. I want to make sure that everybody understands that that this is not, you know, this is these aren't engineered. This isn't an engineered design. This isn't a, a plan that has uh, been cast in stone by any means. You know, this is it's a conceptual plan that they brought to us because they looked at our comprehensive plan and they felt like you know they have some ideas that they could bring to us and develop that would match our comprehensive plan. So this is their <coughs> interpretation of. Um, you know, tonight we're just asking you to to take that all in mind, and uh, and you know, express your concerns because this is a big change, but uh, but also consider the possibilities here, the way that uh, that this project could help us both socially and economically. You know, what you know, we as a city we need to be worried about securing the future uh, of Whittier. Right? We need to think about not just what's going on here for us now, which you know, and we do need to be concerned about that, but we also need to be concerned about 20 years from now, 30 years from now. You know, what are we going to be kicking down the road? You know, what kind of can are we kicking down the road for those guys? Um, we don't want them to be fighting for resources and trying to pay the, pay the bills, and how are they going to pay the roads and and uh, fix their water system and you know their, their sewer system. Uh, you know we need to do something now to help those guys in the future. Um, talking too much, so I want to kind of check in. Um, uh, this is Mickey. Uh, your last name is Richardson. Mickey Richardson uh, with Huna Corporation. And uh, Mickey, what do you think? You know, when, when you're thinking about this project and how it might help the city. What are the first things that come to mind? Oh man, that's a big one. Um, well, first of all, Mr. Mayor, thanks for having us. And uh, it's, it's awesome to see the turnout here tonight as well. Um, you know, when we think about uh, our, our city and we watch the economic turn from starting with the fisheries dying out and then the timber industry that also died out, we were looking for something that was sustainable for our, for our community. So when we look at, you know, what we're proposing for the head of the bay, we're look, really looking at a long-term plan like this isn't just a short model this is something long-term and a sustainable model uh, for the community that's obviously our focus has always been on how do we take the the values of the community and weave that into the culture of the port and the destination versus taking the port and trying to weave that and make that be the, destiny, the, the identity of the city. So um, the way that Whittier sets up with the distance between town and the head of the bay, it just really is a, a, a really cool opportunity, we believe, for a sustainable future for the city of Whittier. Yeah, the, um, you think about some of the, the social benefits. You know, can you tell us a little bit about what's happened down there in Huna? How has it affected the schools uh, and the families that live there full time. Yeah, there's been a you know there's been a huge economic growth. I mean, we're a city a little bit larger, Huna is, of 760 people, 
and we employ about uh, annually for the season about 265 employees. So basically that means that everybody who's interested in working can, can work. Um, but also we do some really cool things that integrate with, with the city. For example, um, we have uh, a bookstore that's part of the cannery, which is where our retail uh, program happens. And the bookstore is, is originally was all run by students. Now they, they run most of our, our gift shop facility, but all of the money that's generated from the bookstore goes directly directly to the school. There's also been some other cool benefits as well to the city. Obviously there's the tax benefits that come along with a port that's, that's operating, but also when we were had our downtime in this last COVID period, um, our cruise partners also stepped up knowing the community was hurting. So I don't know if you saw in the news that uh, Norwegian Cruise Lines, for example, donated $10 million to Southeast and our little community of 760 received $2 million of that funds straight away. So um, there's been lots of cool things and benefits that have happened. And that was no strings attached, meaning that money didn't come to the port, it went directly to the city, and that went to schools. Also during that time period too, Royal Caribbean came in and uh, the city didn't have the, the funds to run the gymnasium. And so Royal Caribbean came in and said, what do we need to do to heat the gymnasium and to heat the pool as well, to keep those functioning during this downtime. So there's been lots of upsides and I could go on a long time about that, but um, you know, obviously being the port as we are a private port, all of those taxes that are generated from head tax, those go straight to the city. And the, and the city has really no like maintenance obligations to the facility, it just goes straight through to the city and they're able to, to work uh, with those funds, so. Yeah, and then you know, some of the other concerns might be just the crowding, right? You know, you think about, uh, you know, what if we were to get a, two cruise ships, if this dock goes in, we could accommodate two cruise ships, um, that would be a lot of people uh, that would be I mean cruise ships aren't we're not introducing cruise ships to, to Whittier right we've had cruise ships here for quite a while and right now cruise ships come in in the middle of the night and uh, you know most of the passengers have left the city by you know by noon if not by 10 o'clock in the, the next morning you know, they really don't have, we don't see them here maybe if you're trying to leave the city on a on one of the early tunnels, you know, maybe you have to wait a little longer for the tunnel. But other than that, the, you know, the, they don't really, you know, impede on our, our daily life here, um, you know, from what, what I can tell. But what about down there in Huna? What, what's that like? Well, that's, once again, we come back to the Huna Tota model, which is a separation from town. So we consistently have meetings with the city, and what we try to do is to balance the amount of traffic that's coming into town versus how many people are coming to the port. So our facility is designed now with the mountaintop expansion to hold roughly about 10,000 people. And then we kind of figure out how many people are in through town. Um, but that's a constant dialogue with the city. And I think really our goals for Whittier is twofold. You mentioned people were passing through. One of our goals is that obviously uh, we would prefer that some of them stay and spend a little money here in town to create business opportunities and, and revenue. And that happens in, in, uh, in Huna as well. You know, like for example, um, we, there's a coffee shop at the port, but also uh, Christy has a fisherman's daughter, which is very famous for, for coffee. And also their uh, salmon tacos are pretty awesome. And so everybody likes to go up, up to town and, and have that. And that's kind of become a, a establishment that people go and visit uh, when they come to town. So, um, and also we've had many people that have worked for us in the past and then said, well, we would like to create our own business. And so we work with them. Some of them have tours that operate on site. Some of them have, have businesses off site as well. So I think our goal is that uh, there's this natural flow and we work through the process of what that looks like and also that we, uh, we take advantage of trying to be a little bit more strategic about the way the cruise partners work together, about when they bring ships so that we're not bringing three ships at the same time, um, that they're individual ships uh, coming on certain days, and then maybe that's partnered with a smaller ship, um, but also that we're very strategic about how we move guests as well, knowing that the plan includes places for them to spend a little bit more time in town so that we're not congested uh, up into the tunnel and that we're, we're a little bit more logistic about that yeah, in I, our I, process. Yeah, I think some of the uh, business owners were worried that you know, all of the business then would transition to the head of the bay and that their businesses would, would falter, you know, would lose money here in the, in the core area. And that's not what you're seeing down there. No, in fact, uh, if you look at the transportation route, one of the things we put in the plan 
was a, a trolley system. We try to incorporate the elements that make up the, the history and the spirit of Whittier and having a trolley system that would connect from the port that would come into town, to, it would bring guests into town, but also have a space that is there with the boardwalk, and I'll talk more about that in a minute, that's really defined for people um, from Whittier to develop their own businesses, right? We have no intent or plans to develop business there, but we set the platform so that business could be developed uh, along that. And so yeah. people might have multiple businesses. They might have a tackle shop on the boardwalk and have a coffee shop in town. So um, we just try to create the platform and the infrastructure is built into the boardwalk to support that type of, uh, and, and obviously there's gonna be times where that's a high traffic area. And then there'll be times where you'll have independent travelers that it might, you know, the in town might be the, the hot spot. Yeah. yeah that that boardwalk is not even actually on the 58 acres, right? Yeah, that's correct. I was going to talk about that is that, you know, we, we originally looked at, you know, what did it take to move passengers? And we, I think we figured out uh, that that's about 1.5 acres of development land that's being created in the city's tideland by the boardwalk. So that's an, an acre, an additional half that is designed specifically for business to be developed as part of, as part of the destination. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think sometimes, you know, you look at these pictures and it looks like the, uh, the development is going to take up the entire head of the bay. And that's not true at all, right? The, the 58 acres is really, you know, less than half. It's like 40, 45% of the, of the land that's up there. And, uh, yeah. you, you know, it, and you're not even going to take up all of that 58 acres. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll talk to the slides here in a minute. Um, but our, our really a need is, you know, one thing is, like you said, we want to be able to move guests efficiently. Um, one of the things that we do at Icy Strait Point is we're, we're really, um, we don't like bus traffic to be the center of attention in the destination. So you see that in our design, it's kind of back of house and we have the train depot to, to move guests. But the footprint that we need to make this happen um, in that 58 acres is only five acres. The rest of it right now is just sketched and that's why I'm really excited about this process because it allows us to get input into you know, what that uplands would look like and things that are important. I mean, we, we had some grand ideas like a gondola because it's just a great attraction and, and it's a good, uh, good draw, but maybe that's something that, that's not interesting, you know, interesting for Whittier. And so it's just right now a concept on the, on the board and it's something to talk about. And we definitely think that having an attraction that draws guests uh, through the tunnel when the ships are not here and allows business to grow is, is an important element, but maybe that's not a gondola. Maybe that's something else. And there's, a, there's all kinds of great ideas. Maybe it's a zip line, right? Uh, maybe it's a zip line. Yeah, you would actually have the world's largest because you would, your elevation is higher than ours. So you, we'd no longer be the largest uh, telescope zip line in the that, world. So that, that'd be pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, how are we doing on time? I think if we transition to yep. the slide, we're good. <coughs> yeah. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for the questions and uh, kicking us off. How many, how many